I thought Suicide Squad sucked uh, pretty much from every, every angle, except for one, and that was Harley Quinn. Margot Robbie is a treasure. She's gorgeous on the eyes and easy on the ears. The only criticism I had was she didn't really go all in, I thought, as Harley. The, the voice wasn't quite there. It was a little shifty. It wasn't always on point. So going into Birds of Prey, my expectations were at an all-time none. I was actually hoping Birds of Prey wouldn't even acknowledge the existence of Suicide Squad. It does though. There's actually a few moments where it takes you back, even reusing footage from the previous film. That said, there's no Batman, there's no Joker, there's there's none of those characters outside of Harley that, that make an appearance. This is very much her film and the, the, the Birds of Prey, I guess. Although Harley's definitely the focus, which is good because I think that she's easily the best part of this film. And in fact, when we do get these kind of cutaways to other characters, I found myself just wanting to get back to Quinn just getting back to my, getting back to my Margot. The presentation of this movie isn't that far off from Suicide Squad either. In, in fact, I think there was some inspiration taken from that movie, but they just used it correctly. There is a lot of those freeze frame scribble doodles over guys' face with arrows pointing, saying quirky things, but you can actually read them. They don't throw up 35 words all rinky dink all over the screen. It is just usually one or two. And it's like, okay, that's either funny or it's not. It, it's very quick. And I, th I thought that the movie ran pretty good for the most part. It is very herky-jerky. You're, you're jumping timelines often. It'll do four months later, two months earlier. The buddy I went with said the movie had a very Deadpool feel to it. It was gonna be DC's Deadpool. I'm sure he didn't come up with that himself. He's not that creative. I think DC was going for that with this film. They succeeded, for, they, they won me over with it. I, I'm excited for more Harley Quinn movies. I'm excited. I don't really care about the Birds of Prey though. I, I just. Harley, Harley's fine. She's actually carried the film really well. Whether it's her just sitting there waiting for that perfect egg sandwich to be done, or uh, she's kicking the shit out of a bunch of people in a prison cell, Margot carries this film with ease. Let's talk about the sex appeal, because let's be honest, that's gonna drive in views, that's gonna drive in people like myself, perverts. And I have to say, it's not underwhelming, but it's not overwhelming at the same time. Uh, Margot can pull off basically anything she puts on and, and she does get a couple good outfits from here and there sprinkled in. For the most part though, yeah, she's wearing kind of an orange trash bag. You don't get to see that classic suit. If you're if you're looking for that animated Batman suit to bust out, no, it, no it doesn't. It, they, they, they do a um, The Wolverine, Wolverine 2 on us, where, where it basically opens a chest and you can see it. That it's that level of disappointment. My Scott Pilgrim bride, Mary Elizabeth Winstead's here. She's completely disappointing. I didn't think that was possible, but she's very underutilized. I wish she wasn't even in the thing because that's not my Mary. That's not my. That's not my Winstead. And, and and once again, the Birds of Prey in general, they're they're there in passing. They get some moments to shine. I just don't. I don't care. Of, I didn't care about them by the time the the credits rolled. I didn't buy it. Black Canary gets probably the second most screen time, played by Journey, I believe is the actress's name. Uh, probably butchering it. I always do. She's a, she's a smoke show. She's she's not very interesting in the movie, but she's very nice on the eyes, except for one thing. And this is a thing that I could probably rant about separately on, on my second channel but I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it here because it's relevant. She has a goddamn bull ring. I don't know if that's the, the technical term the kids are using these days. Why do they exist? She has a gold bull ring that is all I can focus on and it's super disappointing to me. Do you guys think it's attractive? Young, young kids, do you think it's attractive on, on a woman? Because you're stupid if you do. And women, teens, whoever's doing this, stop. Just stop doing it. You don't need it. You don't need it. It can't be good. There's got to be infections with that too. Why are you doing this? Stop with the bull ring. Stop with the bullshit. All right, comb your hair, wash your face. You're good. You're good to go. Goddamn bull ring. It just—it was just there. It's just in its gold, so it's just standing out like a sore bull ring. I couldn't help myself from looking at it. And she's wearing a great outfit too. I, I could have been distracted by other things, but that bull ring was calling me. Uh, they intentionally did that. I know they did, just to piss me off. Speaking of pissing me off, and we'll get back to the movie, I promise, but it wasn't that packed of a theater. I have no idea how this thing's gonna do. A lot of people are doing the whole go woke, go broke bullshit. Um, that's that, that's another rant I could probably do. There's definitely that, that side of Hollywood that's super annoying where they're pushing that agenda. And then there's the other side where, where 
guys are getting like super upset about even like the most minuscule thing. It's like as soon as you announce there's a there's a female driven film, it's just it's over. You have 35 videos over here being outraged that don't actually see the movie. And then you have the marketing on this side with the fake tweets that are like, oh my God, girl power. Yeah, you know, screw men. So it's just both both sides coming together and this is the shitty world we live in. What I was gonna rant about, not that, was this jackass about eight, eight seats down. No, nah, no. He might have been 12 seats down, but he, he might as well have been sitting right next to me in my goddamn ear because he was chewing popcorn like it was the last thing he was ever going to consume before he died. He had like a feeding time too. 40 minutes into the movie, he busts out this stupid little popcorn and he's like a gopher. He's just <laughs> Because I'm a terrible friend, I pointed it out to my buddy and it was the only thing he could hear moving forward. Thankfully, the grazing period only lasted about 20 minutes or I was about ready to go over there and feed him my foot. I have kids of my own. I try to raise them right. And the biggest thing I, I try to teach them is to have respect for your fellow human beings, which means not eating like a complete fucking slob, like the worst person on the planet. This guy's got his mouth fully open when the popcorn's inside. He's just like... <laughs> Imagine this, just 20 minutes of this. Maybe I'm on the spectrum. Maybe that's, maybe I'm the problem. Maybe I just pick up on the, these things that, that I shouldn't be picking up on. Maybe that's on me. I'm gonna have to do some soul searching after this is done, but let's get back to the film review. Ewan McGregor, the bad guy Roman, blackface, black mask, black skull, I don't know his name. He, he puts a skull mask on at some point. He gets gayer as the film progresses, and that's not a some sort of a derogatory statement or a slander against the, the gay community. No, he legitimately becomes gayer as the movie goes on. He's like, he starts out as this kind of just tough, you know, gritty bad guy, he's cutting faces, he's killing people. And then by, by the end, he's like Bugatu from Zoolander. It wasn't bad, I just wish they would have kind of like started him out that way and just kept going with it. Cause you like gay flamboyant Ewan McGregor is fantastic. That would have been a fun character. But as it stands, he's just kind of all over the place. The other suicide-esque quality this film has is the soundtrack, which is rampant with music, both good and bad. It did have a song by Kesha. I celebrate her entire catalog. I'm not even joking. Kesha's fantastic. It can often go from song to song to song without a break in between. It feels more like a collection of small music videos than, than an actual cohesive story. But at the end of the day, I had a lot of fun with it. It comes together nicely. I want to talk about the action. It's pretty damn good. I'd say 80% of it works really well. I think I read somewhere and I'm not gonna check it out and see whether or not it's true. I'm just gonna assume it is. I'm gonna spew it out at you like it's fact that the John Wick choreographers came back, did some reshoots for this movie. If it wasn't them, whoever did the choreography did a good job of pretending it was because I thought it was fantastic. There's a lot of gunshots to the face. There's a lot of kicks through car doors and windows and all sorts of great stuff is going on. It gets violent. There's a couple of gruesome parts, a couple of broken bones. I was all in. Towards the end of the film, it turns into kind of a PG-13 Batman and Robin affair. When the whole crew is together, they're, they're, there's the scene where they're fighting in, in an amusement park. It's kind of silly and stupid. And that action didn't work for me. That's the only time I didn't, I wasn't into it. So to summarize, it's no Deadpool or Deadpool 2. It's a hell of a lot better than Suicide Squad, which if you stick around this channel, I'm going to do a Suicide Squad versus Birds of Prey movie feud, my, my flagship show here. So subscribe if you haven't. If you have, thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you liked it. And if you did, feel free to subscribe if you haven't to Adam Does Movies. It's my main channel here on YouTube. If you really like what I'm doing, I have a second one called Adam Olinger. It talks about more than just movies. I, I, I rant about kind of random issues that have no real consequence, like leaving your shopping cart out in the middle of the parking lot or getting screwed on a coffee size or just something just ridiculous, you know, kind of first world problems. 
Um, I, I, I do have a couple skit shows over there, like The Cringe, where I play a comical character. It's fun, it's dumb, it's loose, and we're, we're having a good time. So yeah, subscribe to both if you want, and I'll see you next time.